Hello everyone and welcome. First of all, I wish you and your family a Merry Christmas filled with joy and peace. And of course, a lot of nice Christmas gifts. Following the tradition, I'm going to unwrap mine right now. Welcome to the IOTT channel, I'm Hans Tanner and I'm happy to see you. Welcome to all new subscribers and welcome to everybody else. So let's see what's in the bag. Here is the first. What is that? Oh, an IBT2 power shield for the Arduino that can output 5 amps of DCC track current. Compared to the first development version shown in video number 107, there are two major changes. First, it has now connectors for DC supply and track output instead of the terminal blocks. This makes it very simple to connect and disconnect the power shield once it is installed on the Arduino stack. No inaccessible screws anymore. The second improvement is the LED, which indicates track power. It is a polarity sensitive dual color LED showing either green or red depending on the track polarity. When fed with DCC, it looks like both LEDs are on at the same time and the resulting color is yellow, well, with a tendency towards green. So let's install the board on the Arduino and try it out. I put it on top of the Arduino Mega and connect the two connectors for DC supply and track output. I already have configured the wire bridges on the board to use A1 for analog input and GPIO pins 11 and 13 for power and the PWM signal. So that is the configuration I use in the motor driver setup of DCCX. And here we go. Power on, the LED comes on. Note that the LED is powered by the real track power, so if it is on, that definitely means the track is powered. Then set the track mode to join and set the speed of my loco number 62 to 30 forward and it moves. Stop the locomotive, reverse the direction and go again. And stop again. Quite a useful gift I would say, but I believe there is another one in the bag. Let's see. Oh yeah, what is this? It looks like the same board but the connector is different and there is a ribbon cable. Well, that is the power shield board that lets you connect an external IBT2 module. These modules have become quite popular and maybe you have one laying around that you would like to use with your DCX command station. With this shield it is a piece of cake. Simply connect the 8 wire ribbon cable to the connector on the IBT2 module. From the track output of the module you can run two wires back to the power shield using the green connector that comes with the power shield. There are two reasons for making this connection. First, it powers the LED so that you can see if the track power is on or off. And second, it also powers the terminal block on the other side of the power shield which can be used to connect a programming track or the DCC input of a Red Hat shield if you are using it. Configuration of the IO pins and definition in DCCX works the same way as shown for the internal version of the board. So here is my example. A0 for the analog input and GPIOs 3 and 12 for power and PWM signal. I then place it on top of the internal power shield, hook up the IBT2 module, which is connected to DC supply and the track, connect the DCC feedback and that's it.
let's try it. Power on, the LED comes on on both modules. Then set the track mode to join and set the speed of my loco number 62 to 30 forward. And it moves and stops as before, but this time on the second track output of DCCX. Next, since this track is also a programming track, I try to read the address of the decoder. I use the command which just reads the address. OK. 62 as expected and no retry messages, which means reading worked the first time without problems. The reason is that the board features a capacitor which takes care of the egg pulse problems I described in video number 105. Of course I am not able to test the function with all decoder brands and types that are out there, but so far if a decoder meets the requirements set by the NMRA DCC standard, the board was able to read and write the configuration variables in both versions, internal or external, of the PowerShield board. And here is my third gift. Well, it looks like it is just another one of the external IPT2 boards, and it is. But I'm using it to demonstrate an exciting new capability of the module, and that is driving DC districts, something that will be available in future versions of DCCX. So for testing, I load the developer version of DCCX found on the DCCX GitHub page. The configuration of the PowerShield boards is slightly different as it allows for configuring more than two boards. So I add the third board with these GPIO settings. A2 for the current measuring, IO9 for power, IO8 for the PWM signal and in addition IO10 for the break signal, which is needed if I want to use the DC district mode. Then I install it on the Arduino stack as I did with the other external module and connect DC and track power to the IBT2 block. So everything is the same and changing it from DCC to a DC district is only a question of the software configuration. As before, I switch the power on and configure the main and proc track. I still can use the join command and it will automatically configure the first two tracks. To configure the third track as DC district, I enter this command. C stands for the third module in the motor driver definition. DC tells the Arduino to treat it as DC district. I also could use DCX instead which would initialize the DC district with reverse polarity. 55 is the digital address I want to use to control the DC district. Let's test it. I send a local command with speed step 5 forward to address 55. And as we see the LED comes on in green and not very bright, indicating a low voltage on the track. I now increase the speed to 50 and the LED is much brighter. Now I change the direction to reverse and the LED changes from green to red, indicating the reverse track polarity. And as, as I reduce the speed, the LED gets darker and turns completely off at speed zero. To test the analog current, I put my little Bachmann Gandhi dancer on the track. This thing is simply too small for the decoder, so it is running analog only. So I enter the same sequence of commands as before and it moves back and forth with DC from the DCCX command station controlled using a DCC decoder address. Well, that's something. So the two board versions work nicely and I added them to the items list in the Tindy store.
Right now I have only 15 of them available, but more will be coming soon. Now wait, before you go and order, be aware of three limitations that will go away with future versions. First, the track voltage of the actual version is limited to 18 volts. If you are a G-scaler, you are better off to wait as the next board revision will be good for 25 volts. Second, there is a problem with DC districts when mixing DC districts powered by the Arduino motor shield and this power shield when it comes to synchronizing two adjacent track sections for a train to cross from one to the other. User Ash++ from the DCCX Discord group figured that out and I am happy he let me know. Thanks a lot. The problem is too complicated to explain in this video and it can be fixed by changing the configuration of the power shield, but with the next version I am going to change the control logic so the problem will be eliminated. And third, user Casey Smith from the Discord group requested additional pinholes for the i square c bus so that it is easier to add other shields like the LCD display. I thought that is useful, so future versions will have an additional 4-pin connector with ground 5V SCL and SDA. Because of these already decided improvements, and because it is Christmas anyway, I decided to give away the 15 boards I have for about half of the price. Check the Tindy store if the above limitations are not a problem for your application. I have also added some enclosure frames for the new versions of the PowerShield board. There are two versions, one for the internal, the other for the external board type. As shown in video number 106, they can be downloaded from the Tinkercad.com site and printed on a 3D printer. And I am also in the process of making them available in the Tindy store in case you prefer to buy them. And that's it for this Christmas video. I hope this information was useful or at least interesting for you and you are ready to notch up your DCCX stack with some serious track power. If so, please let me know in the comments and click the like button below. Doing so feels a little bit like Christmas for me and you help to promote this video and the IOTT channel in general because YouTube likes the likes. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.